Welcome back to the jungle. It's the Big Game Hunters. It's Wednesday, and today we're talking about some of the jobs, the highest paying jobs right now to close out the year 2015. You know, in 2014, a lot of the high paying roles were surrounded around mobile development and, and mobile engineering. And that's where a lot of like, you could fast track your way to, to higher paying salaries. And in right. 2015, it's all about data. Big data, it's the new uh, it's the new trend. We're looking at uh, some of the top roles here. In fact, uh, we're starting to work more and more on jobs, especially in Seattle, you know, Silicon Valley, San Francisco, data scientists. Data scientists is a huge one that we're seeing. So confusing. And it's, I mean, it's, it's really high level. It's basically being able to extract high level meaning from you know, copious amounts of data because yeah. obviously more and more analytics is becoming the trend. People are tracking everything these days. Businesses are tracking everything and be able to deal with all of that. You know, it's it's not just simple numbers crunching. It's not simple, you know, monkey at a computer stuff. It's being able to be creative with extracting meaning from these big amounts of data. And data scientists, basically, you know, the way I've heard it, which is an interesting way, is that this is it's someone who's better at stat to statistics than a software engineer but better at software engineering than a statistician. So you have to have, be able to wear multiple hats. You have to be very, very but sharp. But yeah, you're not, you're not leaning too far on the right. You're not leaning exactly. too far on the left, right? Because yeah. mathematics and computer science, especially when you're doing the coding and, and extracting that kind of data does go hand in hand. Right. Um, right. So big data is one of the big things that we're gonna see big data is big things coming in through 2016 and probably through to 2018, 2019 until the next big wave of, of, of something comes along, Absolutely. right? Well, companies are so data driven because they're getting such valuable insights and in how to run their operations. And that's from a customer standpoint, like we're seeing a ton of companies that are popping up from a customer data standpoint. Oh, yeah. um, and, you know, Vision Critical is one of the big ones here. And we're seeing a lot of companies pop up from, you know, human resource data and, and figuring out how to drive the company uh, forward by that data. So data scientists, data engineering, what, yeah. what's the difference between a scientist and an engineer in data? So a data engineer basically will format the data to make it more palatable, more easy to comprehend for stakeholders like the executive team, whereas a data you know, data scientist will actually be able to interpret the meaning from these big amounts of data. So data scientists will actually provide the meaning where a data engineer will basically format the data to allow people to interpret the meaning themselves. So yeah. data scientist is a bit higher level, but I mean, both of them are, you know, the, the latest and the greatest sort of trends. That and I think, you know, one of the, the, the bigger trends here, like we're what we're trying to do here is we're trying to advise on people like, you know, the ones that are trying to, you know, fast track their way to a yeah. salary with with minimal, uh, it's not like you need to take 20 years to get there, right? Yeah, and there's, they don't even teach, I mean, th there's not really a lot of courses these days. I mean, there is data courses and statistics and whatnot, you, they don't really teach it It would it be outdated every year, right? Absolutely. Like university course would be outdated Absolutely, every so that's year. why these, these high level in demand jobs are something you can really teach yourself in a lot of ways. Yeah. I mean, if you sit down, obviously you have to be very good at math, very good at uh, understanding statistics, and that's something that can come with, you know, being naturally sort of you know, pointed towards that thing. But also you can sit down and teach yourself coding. You can teach yourself Python. You can teach yourself R. You can teach yourself C+. Java. And there's a lot of, you know, that stuff is always constantly growing. And so if you can sit down, you know, not only just, you know, teach yourself through online, but you know, attend courses, attend competitions. Yeah, there's, there's, so there's a way ways. here to fast track yourself if you're in if you're in that industry to that kind of salary. And those, those salaries are available. And these people are so high in demand. Yeah. Almost every company that's looking for a data engineer, data scientist are using recruitment firms, they're going to networking events, they're doing anything they can to entice these people to come work for them because they're so yeah. limited. I'm telling you, if you want to get a high paying job, get into this, get into the big data game and you will fast track your way very quickly. I think if you're in that, if you're in security, we're talking about developers and security, sales engineers and security, those are big ones. IT come, security, yeah. IT security. And I think a big thing too is, I mean, it's easy to say get into big data and easy, it's easy to say become a data scientist and become a data engineer, but you really, I mean, it's takes, you know, it takes a having that mindset, being somebody who is just naturally good with numbers and naturally good with math. We all know there are some people who are more, you know, more good at that, more, more that's, yeah, it better, comes more yeah. naturally. Yeah, yeah, it yeah. becomes more, you know, math is something that comes more naturally to them and math is something that excites them where other people, it's, you know, the worst thing in the world. Other people yeah. hate math, right? So if you have to be that kind of person who's sort of partial towards math and partial towards statistics and partial towards data and can sort of have fun and being able to source and parse through data, that's uh, that is a huge part of it and if you if you are you know if you have fun with math and this is this is something that you should get into for and sure. I think translating that back to like keeping into the mobile space as well like scarcity creates more more of a, of a higher paying job right we're seeing Ruby on Rails developers yeah um, are, are getting paid significantly higher for and that's actually one Ruby on Rails is actually one of the uh, the technologies that's a lot easier to teach yourself than some of the other ones like JavaScript and C sharp Ruby on Rails is something that you can go online there's a, a, a place called code school where you can actually go and it'll teach you a lot of 
of what you need to know about Ruby Code on Rails. Code Academy is another yeah, one too. You, you can, can just, teach yourself Java. You can and just teach yourself that way. And yeah. I mean, there's a lot of various resources to learn Ruby on Rails. But you're right because you know the industry is so cyclical. And Ruby on Rails, a lot of developers sort of look on that as like, ugh, Ruby on Rails. That's like prehistoric. But at the same time, it's still uh, in so hot demand, especially in Southern California right now, just because there aren't a lot of them. And so companies build their stack on that on yeah. the Ruby stack, and then and then they're like, oh, where are we going to find this talent? Oh, well, we're going to have to pay. Right. So again, we're finding tech because of the scalability and the rapid growth that that's where the accelerated path to higher paying salaries are. Mm -hmm. um, and I actually, you know, I alluded that I wouldn't know what the next big thing after big data would be. And you know, I actually do believe it'll be an artificial intelligence, right? Having people that can come into an organization or, or build their own companies based around AI will be something to watch for oh, the future. Mach machine learning engineers machine are one of the learning top learning huge, too, which is right? kind of machine learning is fascinating because it's basically the idea Again, of, it's like, of what? Terminator. It's basically teaching a machine how to teach itself. So you're basically trying to make it as close to sentient as possible. Yeah. You know, and that's that's fascinating. The greatest yeah. existential threat. Yeah. Bill Gates agrees, so, Elon Musk to agrees Stephen to Hawking. us, yeah, yeah. is the advancements of artificial intelligence. Absolutely. And I think that we're, we're predicated on a society that's just going to keep trying to push that boundary until we get to a point where someone is literally like sitting beside me and looks like, yeah, well, because the whole idea, right, is if you teach something to do something well enough, it'll learn how to do it so well that it might be detrimental to everything else that's going on. You might yeah. teach a machine how to do something. If you can get a computer to learn without yeah. human interaction, like that's amazing. So yeah, right. they get paid a lot. And what we, the, what we kind of wrap up this, this list of um, is with the Android developers because what we're noticing um, in Canada as well as in the US is more people are, are inclined to uh, engage on the Android platform because there's just more people globally, yeah. right? And, uh, for and Android reason, is really starting to outpace yeah, iOS. Yeah, so we need more Android developers, right? So because we need more Android developers and more positions to fill, the demand goes up higher and they're getting paid now more than iOS developers if you compare just apples to apples on that. And that comes from, again, a supply and demand of people looking yeah. for more Android developers than they are looking for iOS. And it's a bit of a, it's a trickier, I mean, you can do so much more with Android than you can do with iOS. You That's have to true. learn a lot of, I mean, you, you learn Java, you learn XML, you learn OOP. Whereas with iOS, it's very know. user friendly, of course, and it's, you know, it's made in a certain way. Yeah. But with Android, it gives you know people a lot of options. And that's why, you know, as more and more uh, types of apps and as more people are becoming more comfortable with it and finding out the crazy things that you can actually do with Android, you know, there's more demand for it. And the last one, the bonus one that I see in the tech industry, so software industry is sales straight up like some of the biggest sales ticket items where you are are selling big you know million dollar uh, purchases to organizations and yeah. obviously taking a pretty large commission are in security sales software sales software as a service sales where there's a recurring revenue um, so if you are looking to get into sales uh, the futures in software it's eating the world and yeah. I definitely recommend it because what I'm seeing when I'm looking at someone with five to ten years of experience and it's in the software industry versus somewhere else these people are making so much more money than the, these others because the last Last 15 years has all been all about software in terms Absolutely, of and you growth. can't just teach a RoboCop salesman this stuff, right? This is a high level tech knowledge that you have to have to be able to go into companies and sell some of this stuff and be able to sell it to you know various Why they need something that doesn't yeah. exist, So it, it takes yeah. the ability to comprehend that and the ability to communicate that. And so that, you know, oftentimes, you know, somebody who develops the app might not have the, the, the sales ability, uh, but the, you know, somebody who's a really good salesperson might not have the, the comprehension ability to understand it. So you, to find somebody who can sort of do both almost yep. like the data scientists. That's uh, a rare breed and that's why they get paid so much. Follow the tech, follow the money. We're gonna see more mobile working opportunities in 2016, I'm sure. But if you're in California, if you're in Seattle, even if you're in New York, Vancouver, Toronto, some of the big markets, Boston, you're gonna be finding yourselves a lot of high paying salaries in tech. So we hope that this helps, you know, get yeah. into big data, get into artificial intelligence. That's the future. Crunch mobile's, the numbers. Mobile's not going anywhere yeah. anytime soon. That'll be kicking around for a long time. So hack your way to the top and we'll see you next week. It's a big, big game. game.